Go. I am ready. Go. Oh. Hi guys. Um, hi Sandy. Hi Rosie. Um, Rosie. Sandy, you have to let me know if she looks at the camera with her ears all perked up. Because <laughs> that'd be so super awesome if she did. Because you said that, um, she hears me saying her name. That'd be so cool. Um, hi, April, happy birthday to you and River. <coughs> Today is our sister in Christ, April's birthday. Everyone wish her a happy birthday. Her little nephew was born a few years ago on her birthday. She says he stole her birthday and her heart. I thought that was the sweetest thing. And April, I wanted to show you something. In honor of your birthday, I'm going to eat this big, nice, sweet, yummy sugar cookie that we made the other day. I'm going to eat this for your birthday. I just wanted to let you know that. <laughs> You're nuts. <laughs> well, I like that. <laughs> You're nuts. I'm a comedian. I'm not nuts. I'm a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get into it. We are reading, starting out with Revelations chapter 11 today with the two witnesses. All right. I went through this a little bit earlier and for some reason it sounds different. Let me go up here and make sure I got the right page. This must be the seventh. The last angel. Yeah, but I think I started that yesterday. I got that yesterday. Sounds different. Yeah, okay, I'm on the right one. Alright. I just thought it would be titled something different from, you know, where the seventh angel was yesterday. But we're leaving off with that. If you guys watched yesterday's, this is, you know, with the seventh and final angel does on the end of the world when Jesus comes back. So let's get started. Make sure I don't put nothing in my mouth. I eat a sugar cookie before we start. Alright guys. I was given a reed like a measuring rod and I was told go and measure the temple of God and the altar with its worshipers but exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. And I will appoint my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands, and they stand before the Lord of the earth. It's got that in there. That's why I'm doing that. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. Can you just picture that now? This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. They have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. And they have the power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Oops. Now when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, 
where also their Lord was crucified. Now listen to this. For three and a half days, some from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. But after the three and a half days, the breath of the life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on. At the very hour, there was a severe earthquake and a tenth of the city collapsed. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake and the survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. The third woe is coming soon. Now, we are getting into the seventh trumpet, which will be sounded by the seventh and final angel. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who were seated on the thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. The time has come for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants, the prophets, and your people who revere your name, both great and small, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. And we're finishing up here with the last few sentences. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumbling peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a severe hailstorm. And that is where we're stopping with Revelations today. That was chapter 11. Just picture what it's going to be like then. What we're living now is nothing compared to what that's going to be. And just think, some people might be like, well, I don't care, I'm not going to be around to see it. But you don't know when Jesus is coming back, so we might be going through this any minute now, or we might be going through it tomorrow. We don't know if we're going to go through it or not, but regardless if we go through it or not, someone in our family down the line, some of our loved ones is going to go through it. You know, there will be people going through it, and people that are related to you. So, which you know we're all brothers and sisters. So, we'll have brothers and sisters going through this. But like the brothers and sisters that are saved in Christ, we'll go up to heaven. So, that's why we need to bring those souls to Jesus, guys. Why we still can. You don't want to get to heaven and then someone you love or someone you knew that was not saved get sent to hell and is suffering here at the last days and they're like why didn't you tell me why didn't you tell me about Jesus and then having Jesus look at you like why didn't you tell them about me they could be here in heaven instead of suffering down there in hell if you would have just told them they might have just listened. And then they, in turn, could have told someone else. And that person could have told someone else. And so on and so on. 
just like it's been passed down through our lives all these years. Someone in our family had to teach about Jesus in order for us to know about him. That's how it'll be with our future generations if we keep trying to bring those souls to Jesus and spreading the good news of Jesus. And hopefully the world will get better instead of worse. But it's going to get bad, the Bible says. And you know that it's true. It's already bad, but it's going to get a lot worse. Our psalm, I'll shut up now because our psalm is a little long today. Um, it is Psalm 139. Another beautiful psalm of David. For the director of music of David, a psalm. You know I love David's psalms. I think they're the most beautiful. And I, I really like this one. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You preserve my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to obtain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be too dark for you. The light will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and adore those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, God, and know my heart. See if there is any offense way in me. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And that was Psalm 139, a beautiful Psalm of David. I'm sure you've heard that many times where it said, um, you knit me together in my mother's womb. You knew me before I was even born. And he surely, he surely, uh, he surely did. We are ending today's Bible reading with Proverbs chapter 30, reading verses 15 and verse 16. And verse 15 says, The leech has two daughters. Give, give, they cry. And verse 16, 
There are three things that are never satisfied. For that, never say, enough. The grave, the barren woman, land which is never satisfied with water, and fire which never says, enough. And that was the end of our Bible reading for today. Okay, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. Happy birthday, April, and happy birthday, River. I hope you all have a wonderful week ahead. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, guys, and God willing, I'll see you guys all again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.